It's the cleaning episode. We're going to talk about my process and all the gadgets that I use to keep everything clean while brewing up a British brown ale. Waiting for a spot on an angled line Driving to the outside Waste my time Took my place high on a rise Look at them ants push away Hi, I'm Martin Keane, taking the homebrew challenge to brew 99 beers in 99 weeks. Today is British brown ale or English brown ale. Now, I am from the southern part of England originally. And although this beer does come in a Southern England kind of brown ale, I think the best known version is from a bit further north, Newquay Brown, for example. Now, this beer is toasty, of course, because it's English, a bit nutty as well, perhaps, but veering away from any sort of roastiness that you might get in a darker beer like a porter. So how do we get to toasty and nutty, but not roasty? Well, the base malt for this is Maris Otter. There's your toasty right there, 76%. And then I'm gonna combine that with 11% of Crystal 45. Then for the remaining specialty malts, well, this is a brown ale, I'm gonna add some brown malt. It's 5% brown malt, and that will give us that nutty flavor. And I'm also gonna add 5% to Torrified Wheat, which is primarily there for the mouthfeel. And then to top it off, I'm using 3% pale chocolate malt. That will get us the color that we want without being too roasty. I've mounted this camera on this telescopic arm here so I can get some cool overhead shots of the brewing process. Let's see what you think. Smashing this guy for an hour, 152 Fahrenheit. Yeah, I think it's time. Ah, the best bitter. This is still one of my favorite English beers that we've done so far. Now, my approach to cleaning, look, I understand the importance of cleaning, obviously having clean equipment means you're gonna have probably better beer, but also it's a total hassle that I try to get done as quickly and easily as possible. Let me show you some of the things that I use. So what do I have for cleaning supplies? Well, first and foremost, PBW. Just couldn't live without this for cleaning. I use it for everything. Uh, I, I use this for soaking and cleaning my kettle. I use it for the hoses. Uh, it's just really, really good. Um, use it for, for cleaning kegs as well. Um, I have this, which is a bottle washer. What this does is it connects to the faucet in my sink, and then it sprays up when you pull this down a very, very strong, high pressure flow of water. It is intended to clean bottles, but really you can use this to clean anything you want. It's good with hoses, it's good with just cleaning out big containers. It will just really get the job done with that high pressure water. Now I have this hose here that's got two quick disconnects on it. One is to connect again to my faucet in my sink. And then this one, which connects to the quick disconnects on my claw hammer supply system. So I use this to send water through my plate chiller when I backwash and through the lid of the system where I have that spray valve at the top. And then, yes, I have a little nylon brush. This is great for just scrubbing things and keeping things clean uh, without really damaging any of the stainless steel. There is also one other little secret cleaning ingredient that I use. I've used it ever since I started brewing. That is my little SpongeBob cloth. It's a little SpongeBob rag that, well, it's got holes in it now. Um, I don't know, I still use this for wiping stuff down. It's sort of uh, 
it has sentimental value at this point. Now, the hop schedule. I'm using East Kent Golding Hops exclusively in this beer. For the bittering, we want to get to about 27 IBU of bitterness, and I'm gonna add East Kent Golding in at 45 minutes to get 25 of those IBU. Then, five minutes from the end, I'm gonna throw in whatever I've got left in the bag as the aroma hop as well of East Kent Golding, and that will contribute a couple more points of IBU. Now I like to clean in place rather than leaving all of the cleanup tasks until the end and my first opportunity to clean something is now that I've got this mesh grain basket out. So this is full of grain and I need to get it clean. Now the first thing I'm going to do is just take this trash bag, put it over the top. and then dump this out. But clearly there's still some work to do, so now I'm gonna rinse this out. Now that has got the worst of it out, there's still a few grains stuck around the edges, so I'll deploy SpongeBob to fix that problem. There we go, that's good enough. It doesn't need to be perfect because I am gonna soak this a little bit later on. Yeast is White Yeast 1318 London Ale 3. Gonna add that in and then ferment at 68 degrees. Now, this is normally where I leave you and we magically move along to tasting, but not today, you're coming along for the cleaning journey as well. All right, step one, let's just uh, clear some of this stuff up. I'm going to use this hose to backwash the plate chiller, which means I'm going to connect it to the wort out. That'll do, just a few seconds is enough because I'm going to run PBW through this in a moment. Now I need to rinse this guy out in the sink, so I need to disconnect everything. I'm going to take the quick disconnect hose off, pull out the thermometer, and then take out the heating element. The heating element unplugs, so I can just take this out and give it a little rinse. And now I can bring this in here and I'm just gonna rinse everything out. So first of all, start with the, uh, with the little hop sleeve. and then give the kettle a quick rinse out too. Now I've connected everything back up and I'm about to put some water into this kettle. Uh, these lines and the pump still have wort in them, so I'm just going to put some water in, using hot water, and then I'm gonna drain the kettle using the pump. And now I'm going to hook this back up to the plate chiller. Turn on the pump. And we're now recirculating through the plate chiller. I have some PBW here, about three quarters of a cup. I'm going to put that in. Now I'm using the hot water tap, so it's about 120 Fahrenheit, the water there. And I'm just going to leave this recirculating just for a couple of minutes. Mm -hmm. 
All right, I've cut that off, gonna remove the plate chiller and I'll just rinse that again uh, using, using this. And then finally, I'm gonna get this guy recirculating. So I'm gonna remove the hop sleeve, I'll rinse that out. Add the basket back in. Put the lid on, hook it up. And run the pump. So I've got PBW now recirculating through the entire system. I'll leave this pump running for a little bit, then I'll just shut it off and leave it overnight to soak. Then in the morning, I will just dump out the PBW, give everything a rinse, and I'm done. By the way, the PBW that's in here is great for using for other things as well. I'll often use it to clean kegs after I'm done with it in here. Now, I realize as I'm talking through these steps, this seems really complicated, but it's just a few minutes to, to give this a clean and um, it's, it's pretty straightforward and the system comes out honestly looking pretty good to go ready for the next brew. All right, so I really am gonna leave you now and uh, let's go to the tasting. So let's give this beer a try, Lauren, back for more. Always. Now, um, this beer, being a brown ale, look, when I was in uh, university, in college, back in the day, the drink of the student union was Newquay Brown, which is a which is a British brown ale like this. You ever had Newcastle brown uh, ale? Oh yeah, yeah, I've had Newcastle. I've never heard it be called Newquay that. Newquay Brown, that's right. <laughs> yep. So let's take a look and see what you think as to the color. Is it a brown brown ale? It looks pretty brown. Uh, yes. And, uh, I'm not getting a lot, I'm what do you think? I personally am not really smelling much. No. So, unlike some of these other darker beers we've done that really smell quite strong, malty, sweet kind of flavor, not really getting too much of no, that. No, I can't pick out much of no. that. No, no. Okay, so let's see how close we are to Nuki Brown on the taste. I think it tastes really good. It's, it tastes, it tastes really light and very smooth. Yeah, I, I agree, definitely a lighter, um, flavor to this. Newcastle Brown, I think, is actually a blend of a light ale and a dark ale, which is how they make it, so completely different to yeah. this. Yeah, and this definitely is tastes on the lighter side yeah. of a brown ale, I think. Well, look, Lauren, this is, I think, the first time we have one of these beers and you've not commented on the glass, because I know you're a fan. I am a fan of the glasses. Um, Doesn't it make the beer look nice? It does. The honeycomb glass is the perfect glass for all beers. Absolutely. Well, cheers. Cheers.